Applesauce and the Christmas Miracle, written by Glenda Millard and pictures by Stephen Michael King, and it's published by ABC Books. This is one of my favorite Christmas books. It is a long Christmas story, but a beautiful Christmas story. I think it's helped for me because the illustrations are by Stephen Michael King and he is one of my favorite illustrators but it's such a beautiful, beautiful story written by Glenda Millard. So I hope you really, really enjoy this one, Applesauce and the Christmas Miracle. One orange evening, tiger striped with blackened trees, a pig sat reminiscing. With eyes shut tight, she saw her valley as it had been. A breeze blew and the swing swayed gently from a willow bough. But then the raging bushfire had come and licked the earth bare. Applesauce sighed, dawdled up the hill and settled in the dust by the shed where Joe and Marigold had lived since the fire. On the blistered door hung a wreath of mistletoe made bright with parrot's feathers. It was Christmas Eve, but tomorrow there would be no celebrations, no special dinner, not even one small gift for Joe and Marigold. It would be a miracle if Christmas came at all. Night fell as dark as burnt toast except for the holes where starlight leaked through. Owl watched over Applesauce. He saw the curl in her tail unwind and called out, Christmas comes from the heart, pig, from the heart. His voice was a soothing lullaby across the burnt hills. Applesauce concentrated, but her heart felt as small as a gum nut. There was no Christmas in there, none at all. Deep in the night, high on the hills, the shepherds tended their sheep. Billy, the littlest one, noticed a great glimmering star. Look at that, Mum, he said. He's shining down on Joe and Marigold's place. Can we call in and see them on the way home? Yes, said Mrs Shepherd. I think we should. Mr Shepherd drove through dry creek beds, burnt bushland and fenceless paddocks. In the back of the ute, Billy and his sister Rosie snuggled up in the soft dry hay and sang carols until they fell asleep. Applesauce heard the ute coming, heard the shepherds murmur something about a special star. But she did not look up, up at the sky or see Joe smile as he welcomed his guests inside. Applesauce knew only what was in her heart and her heart was as empty as the shepherd's hands. Next morning, Applesauce woke to the sound of the shepherd's voices. Merry Christmas! Billy and Rosie shouted as they tumbled outside. Applesauce trotted after them to the dam and watched as they wove flat green rushes into hats, one for each other and one for her. As they all admired their reflections in the water, Applesauce wished there were hats for Joe and Marigold too. By early afternoon, Billy and Rosie had filled a bucket with yabbies. Their father was cooking them and their mother had just put some damper among the coals when a cloud of dust billowed across the horizon. Ahead of it, a battered car rattled through the gate and rolled to a stop. Marigold's three elderly aunties stepped out. The first 
carried something round, wrapped in a rag. The second, a shoebox tied with string. And the third, an empty wooden crate. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Shepherd hugged the aunties. Merry Christmas, Mr. Shepherd waved. Auntie Pearl unwrapped a large sticky plum pudding. Auntie May's shoebox was filled with shortbread. Mr. Shepherd lined Auntie Ruby's fruit crate with an armful of hay and placed it in the shadow of the burnt tree. Then Joe opened the shed door and he and Marigold walked towards their visitors. Marigold carried a bundle in her arms and she and Joe were smiling as if they had received the best gift of all. The shepherds and the aunties gathered around them. At last, Marigold placed her bundle in Auntie Ruby's crate. Applesauce inched closer. There on the hay was a baby. A flock of cockatoos appeared high above them, swirling, drifting, then settling like snowflakes on the sooty paddocks. The new red leaves on Owl's gum tree blazed like fairy lights against the winking eye of the sun. Applesauce felt something strange happening inside her. On that orange summer evening, tiger striped with blackened trees, Applesauce remembered the words of an owl. And let Christmas fill her heart. That's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoy it every single time I read it. And I hope you spotted some of the characters from the real nativity. So the real um, people portrayed in this as something slightly different. For instance, did you notice that there were, instead of three wise men, there were three lovely aunties. So maybe if you didn't spot all of those people from the first um, original real nativity, then maybe go back and listen to the story again and I think you will enjoy it even more. Applesauce and the Christmas miracle. Merry Christmas. <laughs>